What's up, Brandon Lilly here? Going to be touching on a topic that is wildly debated. It is very heated on the internet, but you know, it was asking about my opinion about my own lifting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go there, and uh, you know, I think it's it's good to hear somebody who has my position as in lifting in both conditions, whether that's multiplier or raw, to give some feedback on that. But the question comes in from Cameron. What do you think is more impressive, your best multiply total or your best raw total? You know, something that I've learned, you know, over over time is to become proud of every single total that you do because that's a direct reflection of the lifter that you are on that day. You know, if you have a bad meet, well, that probably indicates that you had somewhat of a bad cycle, and that's that's the truth. You know, you have to accept the truth for what you are, and you have to be proud of yourself no matter what you do. But in all honesty, if, if you strip everything away and you ask me, what are you most proud of? Uh, I'm going to say the 2237 that I did at Capo that probably best displays my true strength. Um, it was a big platform. It was a big meet. There was a lot of hype around the meet. Um, you know, so I'm proud of that total for more than just the numbers that you see. And that's, that's kind of the condition of the 2612 that I hit in multiply. People that, that sit and they rip on multiply and they say, oh, the gear does all the lifting for you and this, that, and the other, they probably haven't done it. And what you need to understand, a lot of people say, oh, Brandon, you're a very strong raw guy. Well, by today's standards, the 2600, even though it's a top 20 total all time, is not that great of a, of a multiply total. Um... You know, Sean Frankel bested that at 198 and at 220. Um, there are other guys that have, have lifted beyond that at 242, 275. And in reality, you know, it's um, it was a hard-earned 2,600 pounds. That's something that a lot of people mistake for gear lifters. Every pound is, is earned, you know. Um, whether you say the suit does the lifting or the shirt does the lifting or not, you have to be in control of the suit, and you have to be in control of the shirt. Um, I can promise you that a 800-plus pound bench press is a precision movement. How many times do you see guys that compete in bench only? You know, that's what they dedicate to, is learning the bench shirt, and they learn that movement. And, you know, an inch or a, even a couple of centimeters either way, and they bomb out. And that's a testament to how hard the gear is. Um, same in the squat suit and probably <clears throat> some of my biggest failures in the squat suit came from trying to squat like everyone else rather than trying to squat the way that I should have squatted. Um, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video, but I tried to, to squat wide and, you know, gain as much leverage from the gear as I could, which that's what you're doing when you're going wide. You're stretching the hips out, you're stretching the seat of the suit out and you're trying to maximize leverage. Well, I'm more of a narrow stance squatter. I probably should have invested in some time in, um, in some polyester suits that were designed more for a, a shoulder width type squatter, and maybe I would have had better results. But, you know, the, the fact that people sit and bash one another, oh, this one's better, this one's better, this one's better, I've never bashed a multiply lifter at the top. What I do bash about gear, and this is what people need to understand about me, um, I hate seeing kids put in gear too early and I hate seeing lifters getting in gear too early. I was fortunate enough to train with people when I was younger that said, you know what, you're not going to touch that until you can do this without it. You know, and then I don't remember the numbers exactly, but it was like a 500 pound raw squat, maybe a 400 pound bench and a 600 pound deadlift or something like that. Those are pretty solid numbers, you know, for a 220 lifter, 242 lifter, like I was. And, um, you know, damn, I really worked hard to get to those numbers so I could get in the gear. It kills me. I mean, it absolutely blows my mind when I see these kids. I, they walk in and I'm like, I, I have no understanding that they're a lifter at all because they don't even look like they work out and they're putting the gear on. Or the same for other guys. When you can't tell somebody works out and they're in gear, that's when it's a problem for, for me personally. I mean, they're allowed to do whatever they want. 
anybody's allowed to lift however they want to, and that's their right. I'm just saying, from my interpretation, um, gear was meant for the strongest guys to display more strength. And I think if you were to take the strongest guys, multiply, strip the gear off, and have them lift um, raw for a year or two, you would see those guys hitting some very, very impressive raw numbers. And that's not to say that raw guys that put on the gear would be able to do that because I invested eight or nine years in the gear, and I would still say that at best I'm a very, very average squatter in the Leviathan. Um, I would say that I'm a above average bencher in the shirt, but the the problem is is that the raw guys don't necessarily respect the the geared lifts because a lot of times the geared lifts aren't judged the same as the raw lifts. So there are discrepancies, there are battles that will wage on far beyond my video, but in reality, I think it needs to be said they're the strongest in each category, whether it's raw. Whether it's multiply, whether it's single ply, whether it's raw with wraps, raw with, with knee sleeves, whatever. If you're at the top of your game, you're a pretty damn strong individual. There will always be exceptions to that rule. There will always be the skinny bastard with eight foot arms that can pull 800 just because. And there will always be that motherfucker that can put on a bench shirt and bench 300 raw and bench 700 plus in a bench shirt. That's just the nature of the beast. You know, that happens in every sport. There are freaks in nature. There are guys who have unfair advantages or, you know, the, the, the advantages of nature, I guess. And, um, you know, that's just the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. But in the end, the cream always rises. So the next time that you want to bash somebody or say that this doesn't count or this doesn't count or this isn't strength, it's it may not be the same type of strength, but you show me a, a weak person that's benched 800 pounds in a bench shirt. Or you show me a weak person that's bench or squatted a thousand pounds in a squat suit. I would argue that most of those people, the vast majority of those people are very strong. And if they stepped out of the gear, they would be very strong if given the time to train raw. Very much like I would argue that the raw guys that are at the top, if they dedicated to gear and give it enough time, they could make some very impressive numbers. I'm not saying they would go to the top because the gear is some weird ass shit I mean it doesn't work for everybody but I would argue that they could put up some impressive numbers so strong is strong weak is weak truth is truth thank you